Hello. I'm backstage in my dressing room. Well, actually, I'm backstage in somebody else's dressing room as my dressing room is being redecorated and I'm... Uh, oh, nothing drastic, you understand. I'm just having the wallpaper redone and putting a new shower unit in and having the large part turned into a wider walk-through area where you can have drinks and things. And tonight... This is because it just got too crowded in there, you know, with people coming backstage after the performance. So I'm having a kind of split-level effect where um, I can change and do my makeup, and then a secondary level where people who've come round backstage after the performance to see me can settle down while I'm changing and perhaps take Tony a glass Bill or two. Tony Bill both here to take two. Why not? I'm sorry, Tony, we just want you to introduce the play. Oh, uh, was that um, uh, a bit in? A bit dull, you know. Just a touch tedious. Oh, I see, yes. Yes, rather boring. Oh, I see. Yes, just, you know, tremendously, awfully yawn-making and frightfully dull. Oh, mm -hmm. yes. Just terribly, terribly boring. I see. So this time I should be more just kind of... Just try not to be so boring. Try, if you can, and avoid being quite so dull. Fine. O okay? Fine. Good. Action. <clears throat> oh, hello. Uh. Not too much of the personal stuff, is that right? Yes, not too boring. I see, you just want me to talk about the play? Yes, talk about the play by all means if you want to, but try and avoid, if you can, being so dull. Okay? Oh, I see. Fine, good. Fine. Off you go. Take three. Oh, hello. Uh, tonight's play in the Tony Bilbo Theatre series concerns the sort of problems that can happen to any of us, the sort of problems that can crop up at any time. Indeed, I once had a cousin who had a very similar problem. His auntie, my mother's sister, and also my auntie too, as a matter of fact, although it's not really relevant to know that, um, was the last lady to drive a tram in Blackpool. And her nephew, uh, who's also my cousin, and indeed, she's my auntie too, although uh, uh, it's not really uh, important to know that, her other nephew, my cousin that is, Tony. had this... Oh, was that uh, boring? Tony? Yes. Just, <laughs> just, a, just, a, just a huge amount. This is Tony Bilbo's Why big chance. A chance to break away from the cosy world of BBC Two hello. and become hello. Rutland Weekend hello. Television's hello. first hello. major superstar. If this new series hello. of Tony Bilbo Theatre can make the big breakthrough that its hello. producer thinks, hello. then Tony Bilbo could be heading for the big hello. time of Russell Harty and Noel Gordon. Hello. Tonight he's playing the part of Michael Hall, a demanding role that has involved him in a vast amount of preparation. In order to get inside the character of Michael Hall, a 54-year-old suburban insurance clerk, Tony enrolled for three years in an insurance studies school, lived for a year and a half in a semi-detached house in Isha, married a nice local girl and commuted to a job in insurance in the city every day for two years. Has all this preparation helped him? Not at all, no. Why not? Well... The character I play is very superficial. And the fact that I now know all about cost analysis, percentage insurance risks, double accounting systems, and have the know-how to run an entire insurance business is unfortunately totally irrelevant to the play. I see. So it's all been rather a waste of time. Not at all, no. I mean, are you insured? No. Have you ever considered the advantages of being fully insured? Uh, uh, look, how well, about this? It's um, a simple form, an endowment policy... Between creating tonight's role of Michael Hall and selling insurance to television interviewers, Tony Bilbo's life has become very busy. Tony, love, want it on set now, Yes, look, fill it in and we'll talk about it later, OK? There's no obligation, except in a purely legal sense. Oh, oh, thank you very much. Oh, and not a word to Jenkinson, eh? Ah, no. OK. Ah, oh, right, Tony. Uh, now, we want you to walk down the street to the end, uh -huh. and we'll pick it up from there, OK? Yeah. Oh, incidentally, thanks for the insurance policy. Oh, you got it. Good. Yes, Good. certainly set my mind at rest, especially the tiger clause. Yes, well, it's better to be wise. I mean, uh, now, if a tiger does come along and rip your furniture apart, you are covered. Yes. And it's worth the extra, I think. Oh, yes, yes. Did you? Yes, oh, actually, I was thinking of uh, taking out some elephant cover. Elephant cover? Yes, because I've read, you know, that if elephants do stampede, they can destroy a whole house. Yes, certainly. Are there uh, many elephants in Rygate? Uh, no, no, not, not too then many. Then the premium needn't be very high. No. Needn't be anything like as high as your personal West End cinema anti-tarantula bite uh, premium, for example. No, well, in that case, I'll definitely have elephant cover. Fine, but uh, I'm afraid it doesn't cover the car as well. OK, well, I'll take my chances against the elephants in the car. Fine. <laughs> 
Okay. Well, off you go then. And Stand there. action. Buy a flag, sir. What? Buy a flag. Why? It's flag day, sir. Flag day? Yes. Flag day for what? Flag day for flags, sir. For flags? Yes, it's hard to flog flags these days, sir. It's a flagging industry, so we're flogging flags to help the flagging floggers. Floggers? Floggers of flags, sir, is flag flogging is flagging. I don't think I quite understand this. You don't have to, sir. Just buy a flag. What, one of these? Yes, sir. They're a bit big, aren't they? They're flags, sir. Well, I can see they're flags. But the whole point of a flag day is you're supposed to be able to put the flag in your lapel. You won't pin one of these in your lapel, sir. I can see that. Why don't you just make little paper flags? Well, this way, sir, we cut out the middle, man. We just flog the flags direct. <laughs> but that's silly. I mean, on, on poppy day, one doesn't buy war veterans. Be simpler if you did, sir, then they wouldn't have to spend all year making poppies to sell on poppy day so that they can afford to spend all year making poppies. Don't be silly. On lifeboat day, one doesn't buy a lifeboat. Indirectly, you do. You don't buy a bit of wood. They're not made of wood. Well, whatever they're made of. There you are. You see, you've lost the thread of your argument. No, I haven't. I simply don't want to buy a flag. In that case, sir, I shall poo-poo you. What? Poo-poo. Stop it. Poo-poo! Will you stop it at once? Will you buy a flag? No! Poo-poo! Oh, all right. <laughs>